Good evening and welcome to the October 15th council meeting. If you'd please stand, we have a very special presentation of the colors this evening. Boy Scout Troop 202 is going to present the colors and lead us in the pledge. Audience attention. Color Guard advance. Troop salute. Audience, please place your right hand over your heart. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color Guard regroup. <clears throat> okay, you can be seated. Thank you. Okay, we have a proclamation this evening for Lights On After School. And I would like to call up Tammy Dawson from the Community Services Division. She is the coordinator for the city. And Natalie uh, Coloca Briones, Community Services Coordinator as well. Terry Timbley, Trembley, After School Manager with the Chino Valley Unified School District, and Tim Walborn, the branch director for the Chino Valley YMCA. <clears throat> Is Tim here? Oh, there you are. Whereas on October 24th, 2019, Chino will join over 1 million Americans to celebrate the 20th annual Lights On After School event, a national commemora commemoration of after school programs and activities promoting the importance of quality after school programs in the lives of children, their families, and their communities. And whereas the city of Chino is committed to, quali for, to quality after-school programs for all youth because these programs provide a safe, friendly learning environment, boost students' academic achievement, build stronger communities by involving students, parents, business leaders, and adult volunteers in the lives of youth. And whereas over 11.3 million K-12 through children in the United States are without supervision during the after-school hours. According to the America After 3 p.m. survey, which was conducted in 2014 by the After School Alliance. Whereas members of the Chino Focus on Youth Collaborative, including the City of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School District, and the Chino Valley YMCA, along with many other youth service organizations, provide significant leadership in the area of community involvement to enhance the education and well-being of Chino's youth during after-school hours, providing safe places for youth to become successful adults. The Chino community believes that every child should have access to safe, friendly place where the lights are on after school. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emulo, a mayor of the city of Chino, do hereby proclaim October 24, 2019, as lights on after school and urge all residents to take advantage of the programs and services that are available to the community. Good night. Thank you very much. We're very honored. It's our favorite time of year. It's super exciting. We get to um, showcase everything that the kids have been working on since we came to school in August. And across the whole United States on that day, everybody invites everybody to come. So we would love if any of you have time to stop by any of our sites. Um, and we'll be showcasing everything that they've been doing since the first day of school up until now. 
Thank you again. We do have nine programs here in the city of Chino that offer after school, including the YMCA. So we would say 10. And again, from 4 to 6 on October 24th, you're all invited to see all the wonderful things, our amazing kids and our staff. We have amazing staff as well. Um, they're doing a great job getting ready for you all, for your guys' visits. And I'm with the school district, and I thank the city and the council for their support. I have the greatest job in the world, working with the, the programs and the people and the kids, and it's, it's just a joy to provide services. Uh, I'm just a substitute. I'm not really Brian. He's the branch director. <laughs> He's a lot taller than I am. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but on behalf of the YMCA, we thank you, and we, um, we appreciate the partnership we have with both the city and the school district um, providing kids uh, programs after school. So thank you for acknowledging this day. Okay, now we have a whole bunch of kids here this evening that we're going to honor. <clears throat> so I'd like to introduce the Chino, fast, Chino Girls Fast Pitch 8 and Under and 12 and Under um, All-Star Team. So we'll start with the 8 and Under or the 8U All-Star Team. The coaches and team members of this All-Star Team represented uh, Chino Girls Fast Pitch and the city of Chino uh, well at the all tournaments during the postseason through their hard work and excellent sportsmanship. This 8U all-star team participated in several tournaments throughout Southern California, and most notable was a second-place finish in the USA Softball District Tournament held in Glendora, which qualified the team to the state championships played in early July in Lancaster. The Chino team was eliminated on the second day of the tournament, but the team demonstrated good work ethic and resilience in their quest to a successful all-star season. So I'd like to call up manager Rick Garcia. <laughs> Coaches Hector Avalos, Sergio Ordinellas, Paula Pereira, and Abraham Ramirez. Coaches, come on up. And then we have team moms, Clara Garcia and Yesenia Valle. Come on up. Now, team members, I'm going to call you up. I want you to line up right here in front. Mia Avalos. <laughs> Leila Caldera. Kayla Cerda, Abby De La Torre, Brianna Garcia, Mackenzie Murray, Evelyn Ornelas, Sofia Pereira, Alyssa Marreras, Ramirez. Mariah Torres, Bella Valle, and London Zavala. Okay, and we have certificates for each one of you. So Rick, Hector, Sergio, Paula, Abraham, Clara. Where is he? We're missing Coach Abraham Ramirez. Okay, he needs to come up here. Clara? Yesenia? Okay, so let's see. We'll come up in front. Mia? Leila? <laughs> Kayla? Abby? Brianna? Mackenzie? Evelyn? Sophia? Alyssa? Mariah? Bella? And London? 
Let's give all of these girls, coaches, and team moms a hand. Now, would you like to say a few words? Uh, sure. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, real quick, just to recap, um, th this team here, these, this group of young ladies right here, uh, did an amazing job this summer. They worked really, really hard. Um, and if I were to sum up our summer in, in, in one game, it would be against uh, Chino Hills, our crosstown rivals. Uh, uh, fortunately for us, uh, we ended up uh, beating Chino Hills 2-0 to zero in a tiebreaker after seven innings where the game was 0-0 zero, zero all the way through. Fan fantastic. I mean, just great softball all the way around, and I take my hat off to Chino Hills for, for their effort also. But we ended up winning that game in an international tiebreaker 2-0. to zero. Um, So it's a little bit of gloating, but I, I love Chino Hills, but Chino's... Number one. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and to sum that up, th these young ladies did something really amazing that hasn't been done in over 10 years uh, in Chino uh, is to qualify, not only qualify for the state championships, but take second place, uh, uh, losing to uh, City of Whittier uh, in the actual uh, division uh, championship game, uh, which hasn't been done in a long time. But I'm really, really proud of them. Thanks to all the coaches, to all the wonderful parents. And real quick, if everybody looks, we have a commemorative uh, patch this year. Chino Girls Fast Fish has been in Ayala Park for 40 years. So you guys can clap it up for that. that that's really amazing that for 40 years, and I want to thank you, Madam Mayor, and the City Council for, for continuing to support us uh, and, and giving these girls a, a wonderful place to come and play and uh, thank you so much. And we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much on behalf of Chino Girls Fast Pitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations to all of you. You know, Chino has been noted as one of the best 100 communities for raising children. And it's because of groups like this, moms and dads like you guys. So thank you all very much for everything that you do for the kids. Thank you. No, you can go ahead. Now we're going to do the uh, 12 U team. No, you can come back up. If you want a big group, excuse me, Rick, if you want a big group picture, have them come back up again. It's okay. Okay, next we're going to rec recognize the 12U 12 All-Star Team. The coaches and the team members of this All-Star Team represented Chino Girls Fast Pitch and the city of Chino well at all the tournaments during the postseason through their hard work and excellent sportsmanship. This 12U All-Star Team finished in first or second place in four of the seven tournaments that they played in. A remarkable feat. This includes a first place finish in the highly competitive La Habra tournament and a second place finish in the district of district tournament held in Glendora, which qualified them to participate in the USA softball state tournament. At the state tournament, the team was only one win away from qualifying for the national tournament. They ended up finishing 13th out of 33 teams that participated in the state tournament. These girls worked hard all spring season to make an all-star team and continued their hard work and dedication throughout the hot all-star summer season. So calling up, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to give the certificates while I call up the names. So we have manager Demetrius White. Certificate. Okay. We have Coach George Amescua. Coach, is it Hubie? 
Hubi Badios. Hubby? I was going to say hubby, but there's a missing B. <laughs> Jason Gonzalez, coach. Is he here? No? Okay, Jason couldn't make it. Then we have Monica Pitts, team mom. telling you to run. <laughs> Team mom, Melissa Cifuentes. Is she here? She wasn't able to make it? Okay. And then we have Alina Amescua. Okay. Lourdes Barrios. Priscilla Contreras. Jaylene, or Jaylene, yeah, Jaylene Gonzalez. Natalie uh, Josco. It's cute. You should see their faces. They turn all red. <laughs> Alyssa Jordan. <laughs> Sarah Magadan. Magadan. <laughs> Christy Mendoza. Kaylee Pitts. <laughs> Annabelle Perez. <laughs> no? Uh, nope, she's missing. Okay, Reina Cifuentes. <laughs> and Dia Daisia? Deja White. There she is. Okay. Coach? First, I um, would like to thank Madam Mayor and the rest of the City Council for inviting us all, not just the 12 of you, but the AU um, girls out here and recognizing their hard work and perseverance throughout the hot summer. The hot summer. Um, more importantly, just want to Say thank you to all the girls for giving so much effort, 100% effort, and the coaches for supporting the team, and more importantly, the team moms who I always call the glue of the team because us coaches, we hate doing all the, the, the background work, the admin work, and all that stuff. So they actually were the, the glue of the team. Um, also, just want to thank the parents for supporting all of these young ladies um, with their efforts to not just play on, not just play the game, but to also flourish in the game and to push them and to support them. Um, and also the city council for supporting these young ladies because youth sports is very, very, very important for these young ladies or just, just the youth in general. Um, health with confidence, um, especially with all the bullying and stuff that goes on. So this is a, a great honor and these girls will remember it forever. Okay, any parents want pictures of the team? Now's the time. You know, Coach, you made a, a very, very good point about the bullying because this brings kids together, gives them um, things they can really be proud of. You know, it's very important. Of 
thank you all again for your participation and all the support for the girls. Thank you so much. Thank you. Proceeding uh, the uh, meeting this evening, we had a closed session. I'd like to ask our attorney to report out of that meeting, please. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council and audience. The city council met in closed session and discussed the two items that are listed on the closed session agenda, specifically item A, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, the case entitled City of Chino versus HRB Properties, LLC, and additional parties. City Council received an update to the status of that litigation, <clears throat> provided direction, and no further reportable action was taken. Item B, liability claims against the City of Chino, uh, namely the claim by uh, the parties listed on the agenda and previously reported. Uh, City Council discussed that claim and no further reportable action was taken after providing direction. Thank you. That concludes the report out of closed session. Okay. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, City Manager Ballantyne, do we have any uh, additions or revisions to our agenda? Yes, Mayor um, and Council. Staff recommends or request <coughs> that uh, we continue item number 14. Item number 14 pertains to the update to the building code and fire code. We ask that that be continued to the November 5th council meeting. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda is public announcements. Uh, I want to give one last reminder that the annual Halloween Spooktacular will be happening on Thursday, October 31st at Ayala Park, located on the corner of Central and Edison Avenues, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. As one of our most anticipated events, please make sure you don't miss out on the variety of fun activities that will include games, trunk or treating, costume contests, giveaways, and much more. For more information, please call 909-334-3258. Also, uh, for all of our dog lovers out there, I wanted to give an early reminder that on Saturday, November 9th, the city, in collaboration with YMCA, will be holding our annual Bark Around Ayala Park at 5575 Edison Avenue from 9 to 12 p.m. All those in attendance will be able uh, to enjoy agility contests and courses, dog fashion shows, trick contests, and various vendors. All dogs must be on leashes, and any owners wanting to participate their dogs in any event must sign a waiver. For more information, please call 909-334-3258. Next item on the agenda is public communication. This is the time and the place for the general public to address items that are not agendized elsewhere on the agenda. We'd be glad to hear your concerns, but we cannot take action on anything that's not on the agenda. Our first written request to speak is uh, Pastor Victor Ruiz from the Living Word Assembly Church. He's going to lead us in a word of invocation, so if you'd like to join us, please stand. Before we pray, Mayor, City Council, thank you for your support and you're honoring the faith community here in Chino. And uh, we have a long-standing tradition, and you've been supportive, and we thank you for that. So, amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, today we come before you in response to your word that commands us to pray for those in authority over us. Your word says, Therefore, I encourage you, first of all, that prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. You know, our founding fathers were right when they came to this great land to embark up upon an experience with government. Father, a government that later President Lincoln rightly described as a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And Lord, whether it be local, state, or national government, one that was committed to helping its citizens live quiet, peaceable lives in all godliness and reverence is our desire. As we move forward with our agenda this evening, I pray, Father, that you would help our city fathers do just that to make wise decisions that would achieve those objectives. I pray that you give them wisdom to make good decisions. Your word also says that if we lack wisdom, we can ask of you, for you are a giver of wisdom and understanding. You know, Lord, as sufficient and as independent as we have become, 
We acknowledge our need of you. So we humble ourselves this evening asking that you would be the source of strength and guidance and protection for our civil leaders, as well as the various city staff, including our first responders, such as our PD and our fire department. Men and women, Lord, that have been entrusted with the protection and the safety of our community. I pray, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom to know when to affirm and when to confront, when to wait and when to act, when to listen and when to speak. I pray, Lord, that you would season our discussion tonight with your love and with your grace. And when we speak, give us voices for truth and integrity, voices that reflect your goodness and forgiveness. I pray, Lord, that you would help us create a community of inclusion where all ethnicities are welcome and every difference is honored. Help us to be mindful of the various stakeholders in our community, single parent families, estranged families, extended families, the homeless, and all of those who struggle, Lord, just to make ends meet. And finally, Lord, we do thank you for all of those who have responded to your call to be servants of their communities. I ask your blessing upon this council and their families. Keep them strong and healthy and committed to the task that they're called to do. Their work is difficult, and it requires the giving of their time and much energy. So give them the strength needed to serve the people of this great community of Chino. And Father, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you, Victor. Next written request to speak is Mayo Briones. And possibly Yvette Briones. No, it's about Mayo Briones. It, I'm Yvette um, uh, You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, Your Honor and Council members. <clears throat> um, I'm here to share with you pictures of my grandfather, Mayo Briones. Uh, we have. Uh, his family, the Briones family picture, which is with my great grandparents mm -hmm. and my great aunts and my great uncles. And there is also a picture of my grandfather in his army uniform, which he did serve during World War II and was dishonorably discharged in 1940, 1944. <clears throat> and as well as the dedication to the Little League field, uh, those pictures which are, were given to you, uh, that was taken in 1979. So <clears throat> with that being said, um, this is, these pictures show the importance of why um, I, as his granddaughter, would like to see his memory and legacy and name continue on here in the city of Chino. Um, my grandfather helped build the Little League Field in 1952. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he also volunteered in the boxing club here in Chino. So he put in a lot of hard work, dedication, a lot of years of volunteerism. So I feel that he should be recognized for his volunteerism as well as for all the years that he coached Little League Baseball here in the city of Chino. Okay, hey, Yvette, I think um, Linda Reich is working with you on yes, that. Yes, yes. And we will make sure that we have a plaque or something that does honor him. Okay, I would like um, that I'm ha we're happy with the plaque, um, but we are, we would like to have a sign as well as with his name um, go to Ayala Park as well because he, um, Mr. Ayala, Mr. Ruben Ayala, the senator, um, he actually, um, gave my grandfather, um, it wasn't a dedication, but it was like a, like it was rewarding him for his volunteerism and for his um, involvement with the Chino American Little League. Um, and my grandfather actually is the one who started, uh, he was part of the Chino American Little League. So if it weren't for my grandfather, the Chino American Little League would not exist today. So I would just like to share those facts with you and, you know, just have his name recognized and have the last name continue on here in Chino. Okay, we will, we will do him honor. And I think, I think you misspoke a little bit. I think he was honorably discharged. Yes, yeah, sorry. Not he was dishonorably discharged. No, he discharged. was honorably <laughs> discharged, sorry. That's the important part. <laughs> sorry, he was honorably discharged, yes. sorry. Okay, yeah. thank you, Yvette. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next is Dylan Ballard. Troop 202. <clears throat> I 
Oh, good, er, hello and good evening, members of the city council. My name is Dylan Ballard, and I am the senior patrol leader for Chino's Troop 202. Uh, this Sunday, we will be having our annual spaghetti dinner at 1 a.m. at uh, the Chino Fairgrounds. Uh, we would like to invite all the members of the city council as VIPs, as well as the rest of the community. Uh, tickets will be on sale for $5 at the door. We will have a live and silent auction, as well as a spaghetti dinner. Uh, we would appreciate it if you guys came out to uh, support our troop, and thank you for your time. What time is that again, Dylan? It's at 1 p.m. 1 o'clock at the Chino Junior Fairgrounds. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you also for the leading the flag salute this evening. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, those are the only written requests to speak that I have. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? Please come up. I don't know if I'm doing this at the right time or not, so feel free to tell me if I'm not. Okay. Uh, I live here in Chino. Can we have your name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Stephanie Sullivan. Okay. Um, we have a couple of things. I live by Mountain View Park, and uh, we have a light that's been out there for a little over two weeks, and I've called multiple times about it. Um, it's in the far, far south east corner of the park okay and uh we're starting to hear people there in the evenings after the sun goes down and a strong odor of marijuana coming from there okay uh, those of us that live in the cul-de-sac that comes up against that want to get that fixed as quickly as possible okay i think probably i'm safe to say it'll be fixed in the morning Okay, like I said, I've called a couple of times and left my phone number and everything. Okay. Um, and also we have a neighbor, a renter in our block that is starting to cause some issues and we wanted to know how we can address it. It's a rental property. They're running a business out of it and they're taking up parking spaces for those of us that live there. Okay. They're running a gardening service out of it and they're blocking a total of about seven parking spots on the street. So residents on the street can't even park their cars. Matt, who would she see about who that? Who would I speak to about um, that? Actually, if you can give me your contact information, then I will call you. I'll write, I'll write it down and uh, hand it to you. Great, thanks. Oh, okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Stephanie. Anything else? No? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm also not sure if this is the right time to speak, but I actually have Can a claim your name? on your agenda. Yes, it's Natasha Wilson Short. Okay, is it already on the agenda, the it item? Is. Okay, then you would speak during that item. Perfect. Thank okay. You. Anyone in the, else in the audience that would like to speak on an item that's not on the agenda? Okay, we have a tradition here, and that is uh, we're often visited by students from local high schools and sometimes colleges who are required to attend a council meeting or a government or <clears throat> some other class at school. So <clears throat> this is the time that we ask the students to come up, give us your name, the school you're attending, the class you're taking, and your instructor's name. That way you're proof that you're here, you're on TV. Come on up. <laughs> Okay, you come up to the lectern, line up behind that, and again, give us your name, your school, the class, and your teacher. My name is Jessica Martinez. I'm from Don Luca High School. I'm a senior. I'm here for a community service project for Ms. Carpenter's U.S. government class. Thank you. Um, I'm Camelia Arizaga. I'm also here from Don Luca High School, and... Um, I'm taking. I'm doing this for the government classroom for the community service project as well. Teacher. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Miss Kim, Mr. Kim. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Serena Rivas. I go to Don Lugo High School, and I'm here because of my government class community service. Um, my teacher is Miss Carpentier. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, David Biscarino. I'm in the twelfth grade. I attend Don Lugo High School, and I'm here for also the community service. And my teacher is uh, Ms. Carpentier. Thank you. 
My name's Ariana Serrano. I go to Don Lugo and doing it for community service for government class. Teachers, Ms. Carpentier. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Kevin Portillo. I go to Don Lugo High School. I'm doing the government class and I'm doing it for Ms. Carpentier. Thank you very much. Um, hello, my name is uh, Nathan Warren. I'm a 12th grader from uh, Don Lugo High School and I'm doing this for uh, Mr. Kim for community service. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Oscar Amador, and I attend Don Lugo High School, and I'm here part of Mr. Kim's class for government as community service. Okay. My name is Zara Haas. I am a senior. I am here for community service for Mr. Kim's class. Okay. Hello, my name is Alexis Perez. I'm in 12th grade. Um, I am here for the community service project for a government class, and my teacher's name is Mr. Kim. Thank you. All right, my name is Manuel Lara. Uh, I go to Don Lugo High School. I'm a 12th grader, and I'm here for Mr. Kim's class for uh, community service. Thank you. Hi, my name is Victoria Cisneros. I'm homeschooled, and I am doing a project for my US government class. My, Great. Yeah, my teacher's name is Mrs. Haskell. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mariana Alvarez. I'm a senior at Don Lugo High School, and um, I'm doing this for Ms. Carpentier Community Service. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eba Gaipset, and I'm an exchange student attending Don Lugo High School and taking Ms. Carpentier's U.S. government <laughs> class. You're an exchange student? Yes. From where? Uh, Norway. From Norway? Oh. Well. Welcome to the United States. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. <coughs> my name is Jasmine Sosa. I'm from Don Lugo, 12th grade. I'm my teacher is Miss Carpentier. And the class? Uh, it's for good for community service. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Destiny Kihana. I'm in 12th grade. I attend Don Lugo High School, and I'm here for the community. Yeah, the community thing, and then the community project, and then um, Mr. Kim's class. Community thing, huh? <laughs> community thing. Yeah. Hi, my name is Gabriel Torres. I'm in 12th grade. I attend Don Antonio Lugo High School. I'm here for the community service for Mr. Kim. Thank you very much. OK, anyone else that needs to address the council? OK, then we will move on to the consent calendar. Do any members wish to have any items pulled or have questions on any items? See none, then I would entertain. Mayor, yes, sir. An item number nine that's on consent calendar, her claim. Oh, Natasha, is that your item number nine? Yes. Okay, then we will pull item number nine for separate action. So I would uh, entertain a motion for the balance of the consent calendar. <clears throat> Okay, there's a motion from Councilman Hargrove, second from Councilman Lucio, and the item uh, passes four yes, one absent, that being uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Natasha, would you like to come up, please? Item number nine, nine is to deny a claim against the city from Natasha Wilson Short. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, so um, I've had several conversations with members of the city regarding my um, claim. Um, I can tell you each, the initial time that I called, um, I was instructed to go online and fill out a form if I wanted to get the road fixed promptly. That's what I was told. Um, the reason I'm here today is the rationale that I was provided over the phone um, as to why my claim was denied was because the city didn't have any knowledge, prior knowledge of the road condition. And I'm a little worried about the due diligence of, you know, what prior knowledge they may have had of the road condition because, one, when I called, I was instructed I had to go online. So I kind of had to take time out of my day, access a computer, go online, fill out a form. Had I not done that, it appeared that it wasn't going to be done timely or maybe get recognized. Um, as I've spoke to people in the um, city clerk office, um, they don't seem to have record of call logs, so I'm not sure if there is, you know, sufficient evidence that anybody, any of the citizens may or may not have called 
prior to my complaint. Um, in addition to that, on the city um, agenda, there is another complaint that was denied um, that is for the same road condition. That person's um, claim was 11 days, calendar days, prior to my incident. Um, my understanding is the city didn't have awareness of that claim either um, because it went into the city of Eastville initially before it was um, sent to the city of Chino. I can tell you when the issue happened to me, I didn't know what city to contact. It's right on the border. Um, I did actually, you know, I, I for a living, I do a lot of due diligence work. I called both cities, to be quite honest. Um, and because I had called the city of Eastville, they actually had asked me, are you this other person? Because they had awareness of this um, road condition. And I said, no, I'm a new person calling. Um, and they explained to me that they believed it was in the city of Chino and that I should go to the city of Chino, which is what I did. Um, so again, like I'm not sure how the city didn't have awareness of it considering a person before me had the same damage and claim um, 11 calendar days before that. Um, in addition to that, the, one of the questions I had for the city was, what is the ongoing you know, inspection of the roads? Knowing that there is construction in that area and with big trucks coming in on a regular basis, it does tear up our roads. And I understand on a normal road, we probably wouldn't be inspecting it on a normal basis, but what's the frequency that we look at the conditions of those roads when there is activity going on, knowing that that could present um, you know, some, some road damage. Um, given that I, you know, it's 11 days lapsed between me and the other person, I don't know how long that condition was on the road, but it doesn't appear that anyone within the city had awareness of it during that 11 day period. And I'm wondering if that's the standard, you know, if there's standard protocols for the city to go out and inspect the roads where there is um, construction being done, knowing that that could lead to damages in the road. So, Mr. Ballantyne. Actually, Fred's gonna. Or Mr. Galante. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, uh, and members of the council, the, the general law under the government code is that uh, a city has to have both prior notice of a dangerous condition and there has to be some verification that it is a dangerous condition. And those two criteria need to be met before a city could be held liable. So, what I understand from the staff report is, and I, I know the, uh, the speaker has explained that she submitted some request to repair the road. The question is, did it identify this particular area? Uh, I understand that there, the city did not have act that actual prior knowledge to establish that first element of potential liability. So um, I can't answer the, the other questions about the road uh, maintenance uh, timing, but um, without that prior notice, you would just not be responsible. Well, but she said that there was a notice 11 days before it well, happened to her. <clears throat> that may be the case, but we didn't receive notice until they actually, actually file a claim. And once we receive notice, that's brought to the attention of Public Works, and they go out actually and fill that. And typically, it's done within a 24 to 48 hour period. Yeah, my understanding is the uh, the prior the other person probably didn't know what city it was either. They filed the claim with the city of Eastville, and it took the city of Eastville several days to notify the city of Chino. Um, I don't know that that individual didn't also you know reach out to Chino, but that's my understanding is eleven days. So I mean that's a long period of time I think from either city to be communicating to each other. Um, I don't know what the standard protocol is for that type of communication, but it wasn't a small pothole. <laughs> my entire tire went in it, and um, it, it actually blew out my tire. So I was thankful that I didn't have any harm or injury and that I didn't hit any of the oncoming traffic in the other lane. It is in an area where there is really no shoulder. I don't know if you guys have the pictures. Um, I submitted lots of pictures on it. Um, it was a big pothole. It's in an area where they have construction. Prior to that area, there is cones on the shoulder, but there were no signs, no cones anywhere near that pothole. There are no street lights, so you can't see when it was dark. And I happened to be going down that road about five o'clock in the morning, so I didn't have even awareness that it was there. So um, that's my concern: is you know, what's the frequency that people are going out and inspecting these roads? You know, I understand the city can't be liable if there's no negligence, but it's hard to prove no negligence if we don't have standards in place to monitor the roads and making sure that they are, you know, 
up to par, especially when there's construction going around. You know, Ms. Ms. Short, I, I looked at that claim, your claim, and the claim in uh, item number 10, and that, that brought questions to me. And when I looked at it, it, it appears that uh, the person in claim number 10 didn't file a claim with the city until the 9th. So I'm, I'm going to assume that he went to Eastvale. Eastvale took a long time to get back to him, letting him know that it wasn't in Chino. But that was one of the things that I looked for to see whether or not he had filed it before you or after you. And it appears he filed it after you. Um, I, I spoke to the city manager and I said, well, how long does it take to fill it? He says that they fill it within that next day. No, it was filled the next day. As soon as I reported it, it was filled, yes. And that's only Okay. Well, I appreciate you bringing this to us. Um, sounds like timing was an issue. If that gentleman did report it to Eastvale 11 days before but didn't report it to us until after your report, then that's why it wasn't filled before you hit it. Mm -hmm. Mark? So, Matt, well, what, do you, what is the process? I mean, can someone call in? and then we annotate that in some kind of log or anything, or do they have to go online and do a formal reporting of that? That, that would be my bigger concern, is that what's, what's the abilities for somebody to call in and report something? I, I mean, I've done that myself personally, so right. I think I kind of know the answer, but I really want to hear what It's I done in multiple ways. I mean, I even receive phone calls, and once I receive a phone call, I normally contact Dave McAbee, and He's pretty quick, uh, again, normally within a 24-hour period. Depends on when I receive it during the day. If I receive it towards the latter part of the day, it's fixed the first thing in the morning. If I receive it in the morning, typically you get somebody out there that day. Uh, people also notify public works. Um, and then if our folks actually see those pothole or any pothole, we will actually go out and fix it. Um, sometimes uh, we did have an app at one point where people are able to um, go through the app and actually file a report saying, I have a you know, a concern about whether it's a light at a park or, you know, a condition like this. And we we do have a log and we, we do uh, make those repairs. Yeah. I'm going to be somewhat critical in the, that the fact that I did go online at one point and I found it, and I've been critical before about kind of our web page and hopefully somewhere down the line, I know we just paid for this thing, but that... The city of Eastfield, for instance, I know you can go to their front page and it's like report a hazard or something is right on the front. And ours seems like you have to search for this thing and dig it out. And uh, I would hope maybe we can somehow put that to the forefront where someone logs on and there's a little, you know, tab there that says report a hazard or something in the city. When uh, I know most people do use the internet for things like that instead of calling, but um, yeah, I've done it myself multiple ways. I've done it that way, and I've done it by phone. So I know that it, the system can work. I don't know that it necessarily worked perfectly in this yeah. case. But anyways. I'm sorry. If you were to go to our actually web page under services, yeah. um, I actually, you know, in our website, put in a word search for pothole. You get in there, and it says you can report a concern. And normally that's the port, you know, portal that people will file those types of things. And that even includes graffiti abatement. We're also very aggressive as it relates to graffiti ab abatement and people will report it. Um, but certainly we can take a look at that and see if we can well, I know make most that people are, well, I shouldn't say this. I'm a dummy, right? So I, when I log on there, I got to see the thing in front of me. You yeah. know, and I got to start punching in potholes and word searches and stuff like that. And, and you're right. If, if you know what to do, it's very convenient and quick. And, uh, but I kind of like those web pages where it's just right there in front of me, personally. But that's fair. We'll, we'll we can look at that. Anyways, yep. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Then um, we would need separate action on item number nine. So a motion or action would be appropriate. There's a motion from. Councilman Hargrove to deny the claim. Second from Councilman Lucio. Please vote. And the item passes four yes, one absent. Okay. Next item on the agenda 
We're pulling and sending item number 14 back to staff at their request. So, pages are sticking together. Item number 15 under new business, memorandum of understanding, compensation, and salary adjustments. This is to adopt resolution numbers 2019-061 and 2019-062, respectively approving the memorandum of understanding for the San Bernardino Public Employees Association and Teamsters Local Union number 1932 for compensation and salary adjustments. Our staff report this evening will be provided by our Director of Human Resources and Risk Management, Mr. Anthony Arroyo. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Presented this evening, as you just said, is the proposed labor agreement for those employees represented by the Teamsters. Over the course of a few meetings, a four-year agreement for these employees has been reached. The Teamsters represents, uh, represented employees will receive the same salary and benefit adjustments as other non-safety groups whose labor agreements were pro uh, presented to the Council on September 3rd. Specifically, a 3% salary increase and a $50 benefit increase per month for fiscal year 19, pardon me, 20. 19 and 2020, and the same increases in fiscal year 2020 and 2021. For each of the last two years of the four-year agreement, there, there will be a 2% salary adjustment and a $50 increase per month towards benefits. In addition, these employees also agreed to an increase in bilingual pay of $40 per month from $60 to $100 per month. Also included is observance of Martin Luther King Jr. holiday starting in 2020. The net increase for all Teamsters represented employees for the current fiscal year is $151,799, which does include the Martin Luther King holiday. Lastly, I'd like to thank the Teamsters representative and bargaining group for their time. In addition, a big thank you goes to my senior staff and who spent countless hours analyzing the various proposals and finalizing the MOU presented to you this evening. And the most important generous thank you goes to the City Council once again for their fair and equal treatment of City employees. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. This is not a public hearing, but is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? Seeing none. Any questions or comments from council? Okay, then I would entertain a motion. Motion from Councilman Lucio, second from Councilman Hargrove. Item passes four yes with one absent. Item number 16, award of contract for construction of traffic signal battery backup installation. This is to award a contract to um, Electnor Belco Electric Incorporated for the traffic signal backup battery, battery backup project TR181 in an amount of $243,000 along with corresponding expenditures that include project management and service relocation fees and costs from Southern California Edison. Staff report this evening will be provided by our Public Works Project Manager Karen Campbell. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the Council. The City of Chino's CIP project, TR181, was created to install battery backup systems at existing signalized intersections, which will provide a temporary power source in the event of a power outage or blackout situation. Transportation staff evaluated signalized intersections and identified those locations that did not have an existing battery backup system. Seven locations were chosen due to their proximity near schools, on truck routes or designated as major arterial streets. Following completion of the design, the project plans and specifications were advertised on Planet Bids and advertised in the Chino Champion newspaper. On October 1st, 2019, at 10 a.m., four bids were received and opened. The low bidder, Electnor Belco Electric Incorporated of Chino, California, is properly licensed and therefore deemed to be the lowest responsive and responsible bidder with the total base bid in the amount of $171,000. In addition to the base proposal, the city wishes to exercise, ex, um, exercise additive bid item A1 for three spare battery backup cabinets in the amount of $63,000, bringing the total contract to $234,000. In addition, staff is requesting authorization to spend up to $23,400 for project contingencies 24,000 for SCE service relocation costs, and 22,000 for construction management and inspection costs. This brings the total project construction cost to 303,400, which is within the available project budget of 387,000. Therefore, staff is recommending award of the battery backup project, TR181, to Electnor Belco, Belco Electric of Chino, California, with a total contract amount of 234,000, 
along with corresponding expenditures previously described. Um, that concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Karen. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on item number 16? Seeing none, any comments or questions from council members? Okay. Is there a motion for approval? Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Lucio. The item passes four yes, one absent. Item number 17, award of contract to asphalt, pavement, repair, and replacement. This is to award a contract in the amount of $259,200 to Hardy and Hardy, Hardy and Harper Incorporated Lake Forest, California for general asphalt pavement repair and replacement services associated with water projects. Our staff report this evening will be provided by our principal engineer, Amanda Coker. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Throughout the year, the city's water department requires asphalt services for various water projects, including pipeline repair within the roadway and paving at city well and reservoir sites. The city's most recent asphalt contract for water projects expired on June 30th, 2019 and was not extended. Consequently, staff prepared a solicitation for on-call asphalt services for water projects. On September 5th, 2019, staff received bids from three contractors after an evaluation of the bids, it was determined that Hardy and Harper was the lowest responsible and responsive bidder. Staff is recommending an award of contract to Hardy and Harper in an amount not to exceed $259,200 to provide asphalt services for water related projects. That concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Amanda. Are there any uh, comments from the audience this evening or questions? Comments or questions from council members? New, no. okay. Then a motion to approve number 17. Be appropriate. Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Hargrove. Item passes four yes, one absent. Item number 18 appropriation of additional funds, authorization to pay SEMA, and an amendment of professional agreements, Monta Vista, Benson Avenue, Caltrans project number. Uh, EA0F0304, authorized staff to pay and apply for reimbursement of the relocation of work <coughs> completed by Caltrans and per reimbursement agreements for Pipeline Avenue, Monta Vista Avenue, and Benson Avenue. Staff report this evening will be provided by our CIP manager, Maria Frazier. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of council. Caltrans is currently in the process of retrofitting the pipeline Monta Vista Benson Bridges along State Route 60. This work affects many utilities, including our city's uh, infrastructure. It was determined that all the costs for the relocation uh, of city owned facilities affected by this work will be reimbursed 100% by Caltrans. Reimbursement agreements with Caltrans were executed on May 7th of this year, and all the costs related to the design and in kind relocations of all the city owned facilities. Um, will be uh, reimbursed. Originally, the plan was for the city to produce design, solicit bids, award the projects, and relocate all the infrastructure before Caltrans contractor could come and um, perform the bridge uh, demolitions. However, by the time the agreements were in place, Caltrans had already awarded the, a contract to SEMA construction for the bridge work, not including utility relocations. To reduce the impacts to their schedule, Caltrans took over the relocations of our infrastructure along pipeline, which is a sewer, and Monta Vista and Benson, which are water lines, via a contract uh, change order to the SEMA contract. The city would pay the contractor for the work and then apply for, for Caltrans reimbursement. This eliminated coordination and logistic problems caused by having two separate contractors under two separate entities trying to meet a common schedule. SEMA, the Caltrans contract contractor, solicited bids and retained two separate subcontractors, <clears throat> one for the sewer relocation of Pipeline Avenue and one for the relocations of Benson and Monta Vista Avenue water lines. The bids for the pipeline sewer relocation came slightly higher, came at $350,074 higher than the engineer's estimate, creating a shortfall on the budget originally set aside for the construction. There's the dense requiring 
appropriation of additional funds for the pipeline sewer reconstruction. The city has received up to date two pay applications for the ongoing pipeline sewer relocation work and with council's authorization, will commence paying for this work. Meanwhile, the city and Caltrans have been coordinating the redesign of the Benson Bridge sewer. The original design of Benson sewer specified a sewer siphon west of the bridge using a bore and jack construction operation. Concerns were brought up by the Caltrans geotechnical team last September, and the concern was that the deep bore and jack pits needed during construction would bring instability to the adjacent slopes and potentially causing damage to the homes located up at the top of the slopes. While discussing alternatives, city staff suggested um, a, lift station, a sewer lift station design, but it was discouraged by Caltrans as they did not believe that there was enough time to obtain the right of way and clear their own environmental requirements. Caltrans steered the design towards a sewer siphon along Benson alignment via horizontal directional drain construction method, different method, and recently the uh, review of the design by the city and Caltrans staff concluded that this design will not be feasible. The design will result in sewer main clogging up due to insufficient velocity of the flows and the construction will be risky considering the depth and the location of the boring tunnel. Staff has met with Caltrans and it was agreed that a sewer lift station is the practical option. The original schedule set by Caltrans was to demolish the pipeline bridge first Monte Vista second, and Benson last, giving Caltrans and the city ample time to redesign and relocate the Benson sewer. The urgency of completing the Benson sewer lift station design arises by the fact that the original bridge demolition sequence <coughs> recently changed. Delays caused by other utilities along all the other bridges and the gas company relocation of a 30-inch gas line along Benson Bridge caused a change in the schedule and it now the work of the Benson Bridge will start first, with the West Side demolition scheduled to start November 15, instead of January 2020 as previously anticipated. The demolition of the East Side will occur around May 2020 or sooner, and the demolition of the pipeline bridge will possibly start around December this year. Staff is, is now in urgent need to design, of design services for the proposed sewer lift station at Benson. In order to meet the work schedule as established by Caltrans, the city must accelerate the design and construction of this facility. Due to the urgency and the time constraints to meet Caltrans construction schedule, staff consider that it would be impractical and inefficient and otherwise not to the best interest of the city to follow a formal solicitation process to procure a consultant with the necessary, necessary expertise. Staff recommends that city council make a finding according to the city's purchasing ordinance, that obtaining a design services for the lift station at Benson Avenue through the city's formal procurement requirements would be impractical, inefficient, and otherwise in the best, not in the best interest of the city. The finding allows staff to attain the design services through a negotiated process. Staff has contacted Transtech <coughs> engineers of Chino and obtained a reasonable quote for the services which include the design of a temporary sewer bypass and a sewer lift station that will dis take the, design, the discharge flows of the existing sewer to an existing sewer facility um, by IUA along Philadelphia Avenue. They have the expertise, the resources necessary for the completion of the services being requested. Staff is confident that the price for the design services are reasonable and competitive. A proposal from Transtech was received in the amount of $231,112 to complete the plans, specifications, and estimates for in a proposal in the amount of $11,710 from Epic Land Solutions, currently an on-call consultant with the city to assist in the right-of-way acquisition. City and Caltrans staff reviewed the proposals and agreed that the scope, fee, and the project delivery meets Caltrans' schedule. Staff has also identified the need for project construction management and construction engineering, and has estimated these costs to be about $250,000, a cost that will also be reimbursable by Caltrans. Staff will retain these services at a later time. 
Staff seeks council's approval on items one through eight as set forth on the recommendations section of the staff report. This concludes my presentation and I would be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, are there any comments from the, from the audience? Any questions from council members or comments? Yeah, I got Tom. yeah Maria, what's the anticipated completion date of this, this three bridge project for all three bridges? It's a three year project. It's going to take about three years before all yes. the bridges are done. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a long time, but it's a long it'll time. be nice when we get uh, new bridges there. All right, thank you. And uh, also traffic control. These bridges will not be fully shut down, correct? There no, and um, I'm sorry. Um, Caltrans uh, is collaborating with staff, and we are in constant communication, and we're making sure that traffic is not an issue. I know that um, for the schedule, the coming up schedule demolition of the west side of Benson, uh, Caltrans uh, register uh, resident engineer has already reached out to staff to coordinate the detour plan. Okay, that is real good. Expensive, expensive projects. Just a question. Millions and millions of dollars. Yes, Mark. Maria, so I think on our city on the move, uh, I ran into an individual that is north of the freeway. The 60 he actually is like the only property that faces Benson Avenue. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, so my, I guess my question is, is, are we affecting any properties in any way, or do we have to acquire anything from any properties, or is that, is, yeah. Yes, um, we immediately contacted the property owner of the um, shopping center where the target is. Yes. And we'll be acquiring a small um, piece of the property in the corner, it'll be on the northwest quadrant. Um, there's not very much used. We met with the owner, she was very, um, agreeable to the uh, right-of-way acquisition. And um, we are in process as soon as we get authorized by staff to uh, retain EPIC to commence the, the right-of-way negotiations. So is that a commercial property? It's a about? commercial yes. property. So we'll be taking about three or four parking spots on the way yeah. on the okay. southeast portion of the parking lot. Yeah, I guess I was more concerned in my mind with personal property, you know, people that own homes. So, so there's, there and we have several bridges that go over the 60 freeway. Yes. Caltrans, this is all Caltrans. This is a Caltrans project. And we had utilities that were running in oh, these bridges. And so they were obligated. Originally, Caltrans didn't want to pay for that obligation, but um, staff had convinced them that it's your obligation to replace these utilities. There is a separate project which we're working with um, that we're doing ourselves, which is the Central Avenue widening. That project does require us to acquire some of the neighboring properties right away, but these other three bridges that Caltrans is doing does not require us to, to acquire property, except for the fact, as Maria mentioned, we were having problems with Benson Avenue, and the original design was a siphon, so essentially it went underneath. They were gonna tunnel underneath the freeway and have it come up, Crazy. and we had concerns um, but we went ahead with that design per the direction of Caltrans. Everybody's come to the conclusion that that's probably not the best design, and now that's why we're doing a lift station. Essentially, with that bridge, the elevation will be higher, and we can't get the grade or natural gravity flow across Benson Avenue. And so as such, we're going to put in a lift station, which will basically pump the sewage up to Philadelphia where there's some existing lines. But I just want to make sure everybody understood what the scope of this project. It's all funded by Caltrans. Caltrans is, resp these are large numbers, and they're going to be responsible for reimbursing the city, both for the design, the construction management, and the ultimate construction. But we have to, we may front the cost, and then we get reimbursed by Caltrans. I hope in a timely manner. Yes. yes. Yeah. When you say Caltrans, you mean the state of California. The state of California, Thanks. correct. Okay, any other questions or comments? Dealing with the state is not always easy. Thank you, Maria. Okay, entertain a motion for to approve item number 18. Motion from Councilman Lucio, second from Councilman Hargrove. And 
This item passes four with one absent. Item number 19, lighting, light emitting diode or LED, street light upgrades within the Chino Community Development Block Grant Area. Award a contract, um, construction contract to International Line Builders Incorporated of Corona for project MS-162, and our staff report will again be by our CIP manager, Maria Frazier. Good evening again, Madam Mayor and Council Members. In the last few months, staff developed a citywide street light inventory and prepared a list of all the street lights requiring upgrade, from the old technology to the new technology LED, in an effort to reduce energy costs and provide better service to our residents when street light uh, outages are reported. Staff identify approximately 8,500 street lights. The city owns and maintains approximately 3,300 lights, and the rest are owned and maintained by either Edison or homeowners associations. The new lighting technology is more efficient, and it will provide longer service life, less maintenance, not to mention it would reduce carbon emissions and it will save the city money. A total of 528 lights will be upgraded in the CDBG area. 81 decorative, 28 safety lights, and 419 street lights. By upgrading the street lights in the CDBJ area, the city will save approximately $5,200 a year. Staff, based on the number of city-owned lights within this area, prepare plans, specs, and estimates. The remaining city-owned light, lights upgrades will be funded as a separate project, and it, would, uh, and it is staff's goal to upgrade, upgrade all the city-owned lights in approximately three years. The project plans and specs were advertised on Planet Bid and on the Chino Champion newspaper, and on September 26, 10 bids were received and opened. The low bidder, International Line Builders Inc., uh, Inc. from Corona, was deemed to be the lowest responsive and responsible bidder in a total bid amount in the amount of $216,342. There is no fiscal impact to the, as this project will be 100% reimbursed from federal uh, CDBG funds. Staff is requesting a work number one a work of, in construction contract in the amount of $216,000 and $342 to International Line Builders of Corona for the LED upgrades Authorized expenditures up to $21,634 for project contingencies and $44,000 for construction management and inspection. And authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents on behalf of the city. This concludes my report and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Maria. Any comments from the audience? Questions of staff from council members? I just got a quick question. Maria, I didn't, had no idea we have between eight and 9,000 street lights in our city. I heard thought, what's a, what percentage per month, that we re, because we had a lady who was complaining about a light being out, about how many lights per month go out in our city? I, I don't expect you to have the answer, but maybe uh, somebody in the back might I have. I think it. I'm going to defer to uh, just a, just staff. They may have the answer. 50. Is that what it is? 50. About 50? About 50. Is that, you, did you make that up, Matt? Or? No, I, I, I got a signal from the back row. The back row. Uh, it, <laughs> okay. it was 5 zero. Oh, And fifth. we have a contract, actually, so we have a, a contractor that goes out and makes okay. the repair. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of street lights. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would entertain a motion to upgrade these lights. Okay. Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Hargrove. And this item passes unanimously. You know, I want to compliment Public Works. You guys are really out there getting projects done. I'm very, very pleased with that. I've probably been one of the biggest nags about not getting things done, the streets and stuff. So thank you very much for being very active. Okay, next on the agenda is Mayor and Council reports. Mine is extremely short this time. You'll be pleased about that. Arms tired from flying in. Yeah. <laughs> My broom, my broom is tired. Um, on the second, I attended Omnitrans and San Bernardino uh, SBCTA Board of Directors, and then on the fourth, on Friday the fourth, I attended the uh, the Senior October Birthday Celebration. So those were the two official things I did. 
in the last two weeks because we were out of town flying uh, back east. Uh, it was beautiful back there. Absolutely beautiful, but freezing cold at night. Oh, my gosh. So, Mayor Pro Tem Howie. Yeah, so I always thought the fall was a great time to go back east, but it could get, get cold in a hurry back there, right? Yeah, yeah we attended the... Um, USC Notre Dame game, doggone it, we didn't win, but I thought I was going to freeze to death. <laughs> oh my cold in that gosh, stadium, it was huh? cold. Yeah. The wind chill is incredible. Yeah. That's great. Anyway, just I just have a couple of items also. October 2nd, the Boys Republic had their Cul Culinary Arts Center and Bistro o o grand opening. I got to present a certificate on be behalf of the city. That was very nice. Max Scott, uh, who's a longtime uh, Boys Republic uh, director, uh, they named the Culinary Arts Center after him, oh, and he was there to he was there to um, to receive that. And they said a lot of great things about uh, Max, who did a great job for I don't know forty years at Boys Republic, a long, long time. So it was good to see Max, and um, that's a quite a facility at Boys Republic. I mean, it's that kitchen is unbelievable, beautiful. Well, those kids are going to graduate um, fully capable of of entering a restaurant and going to work. Huh? Yeah. yeah, that's a great really that's a good. great program. You know, they used to. Have, have programs at Boys Republic with, for the kids about uh, masonry and carpentry and they had a little dairy, they had some dairy and some farming. But now they've, they've also now have um, uh, food service as one of their uh, uh, classes that the kids can take. So it's really good. Also, I attended the Rancho Del Chino Rotary Bingo on August the 7th. It was a good fundraiser. August. I mean, August, October 7th. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. And, uh, and then also the San Bernardino County Transit Authority meeting on October the 10th. Uh, and so that was a good meeting also. And I just wanted to wish everybody a happy Halloween and a safe one. Okay, that's it. Okay, Councilman Hargrove. Well, with this laryngitis thing going on, I'll just... No. <laughs> um, just have a safe holiday. Uh, I know the park down there is going to put on a spectacular. I would recommend that the kids go down there and enjoy it. Be safe. Stay off the streets and the sidewalks. So yeah. uh, happy Halloween to everyone. And that concludes my report. Okay. Councilman Berlusio. Uh, mine also is going to be pretty short. I, on the 9th, I attended the Chino Valley Independent Fire District meeting. Uh, I was able to present a certificate of recognition for Deputy Chief Tyler Johnson, who retired. Uh, I, too, was out of town this weekend. Uh, I went to go see a Baylor at my daughter's homecoming. It was a good time. I didn't really think they were for real, but they're 6-0 and now and ranked 18th in the nation, so uh, my hat's off to them. But uh, like Councilman Hargrove said, uh, October 31st, uh, the Halloween uh, event that we're going to be having at Ayala Park is a good turnout. Uh, make sure that you take your family there. You're going to have uh, some bounces, uh, Halloween costume contest. And it's always a good turnout with uh, the people from the community. So if you haven't if you haven't been, please go. It's a good thing to attend and also be safe on Halloween. That's all I have to report. Okay. City Manager Ballantyne, anything this evening? Yes, the only thing I wanted to report, uh, we held our office hours down in the preserve um, earlier this month. And uh, we'll be taking a break during the holidays and we'll be starting uh, the office hours back up uh, on February 7th. So. That concludes my report. Okay. City Attorney Galante. Uh, thank you. Our, recently, the governor signed several housing bills into law, and our firm will be summarizing those laws and providing some general advice. So um, look for our update coming soon. Yes. Uh, I read a recap of some of those bills that he signed Wednesday, and it's quite shocking. It's going to, uh, people are very, very concerned about uh, high density. Well, please pay attention to what's happening up in Sacramento because um, it's going to be a shock for all of us. And it's the state is removing local control. So, um, and this happens concurrently with the RENA cycle, uh, yes. where the housing numbers that have come out of uh, HCD are pretty astonishing. So, well, and it's shocking, especially you know, cities are responsible for providing infrastructure. And that infrastructure, which is, you know, sewers, waters, that kind of stuff, is all based on what we think our build-out is going to be. And with the governor signing these bills Wednesday, he's essentially taking control of our, our housing numbers out of our control. So let's say you have an infrastructure planned for 10,000 housing units, 
and because of what was signed into effect, that could be doubled to 20, but you only have infrastructure that supports 10,000. So it's, it, it's mind-boggling. It's absolutely yeah. mind-boggling. And people are going to be very upset. They're going to blame us for allowing these, these units to be built when we have no control. So um, I'm hoping people will pay attention yeah. and communicate their concerns with their state legislature. Unfortunately, there are consequences built in for not, not complying. complying. So Heavy you, fines. You have it very correct. Yeah, it's, it's very problematic. Uh, Chief of Police Simmons. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind the community that Thursday, uh, October 17th, is the Great Shakeout. So please join us, uh, the city of Chino, and other, other businesses and, and entities throughout the state of California at 1017 AM to drop cover and hold on and uh, practice uh, preparing for the big one that uh, will be, we'll be here one day. So just uh, continue to prepare and make sure you have your families taken care of as well. So that's all I have to report unless you have anything for me. No, I don't. Thank you, Wes. All right, thank you. Chief Shackelford. You're here, <laughs> two times in a row. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, just one brief report tonight. I wanted to thank the public for coming out to our open house uh, this past Saturday. We had at least uh, 3,000 people there. It was very difficult to count with the wow. access points. We had an outstanding turnout. And also thank city staff for their support of the event. It was a, a great day. The weather was nice, not too hot, and no rain. So just a big thank you to the community for their support. Well, thank you for the acknowledgement. With that, we will adjourn our meeting to our next regular meeting to be held on Tuesday, November 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. in these council chambers and with closed sessions starting at 6 p.m. if necessary. We are adjourned. <laughs>